there, this is Chris Sev. In this video, we are going to be building a new type of nav bar. In recent videos on this channel, we have nav bars in Tailwind and we have a top nav, looks really cool. Slide it over, we have a mobile menu now. We have also done a fixed nav bar where if you scroll, it stays. We've done a couple other ones like a sticky nav. The big one that I wanna talk about is one that I really love is the side nav. This is what I used on a lot of my websites when I started my coding career, and I think it's still really valid. I think it's still an awesome navigation. So we're gonna do a side nav in this video, and also we're gonna make it responsive. So as we go down, you will be able to click this and open and close the side nav. All right, so let's get started here. I'm going to open up a brand new code pen, go into settings, all the way down. We'll add the Tailwind style sheet right here. Save and close. And what we're gonna do here is no CSS and we will use a little bit of JavaScript at the end for that mobile menu so we can click and toggle the menu on and off. But for now, we'll close out that JavaScript panel. To start us off, I'm gonna go with relative, min height is screen, and let's go for flex. And the reason I did flex is we could say sidebar right here, sidebar right here, and then we're gonna have content here. If we do that, we're gonna say div right here, div right here. I guess you could use an aside for that, but I'll keep it a div, and then inside of that we'll have our nav, nav right here, and then here is logo. So I'm just commenting everything out, making sure that we have everything in place first, content, and then we'll say content goes here. And we'll just say right now, logo and nav. Okay, so you can see that the logo and the nav are sitting on the left and the content is sitting on the right. And that's why I did Flexbox here so that they sit left and right. Let's go ahead and give the sidebar a little bit of character here. Let's go for background of blue at 800, text blue at 100. And let's give it a width of 64 since it's so tiny right there. And there we go. So now that it is a little bit larger, and feel free to play around with this number for whatever size you feel is best for your site. We have this with 64. We have Flexbox here, so this sits right on the right side of it, and this sits on the left side. Let's go ahead and style our content just a little bit. Class is padding of maybe 10. Let's give this a text of 2XL, and let's say font is bold. Just for a little bit of fun, just to make sure it doesn't look so ugly. But the one thing I'm seeing is that if I right click here, inspect, it looks like the content for this doesn't really go the full width of what's left of that width. So the width of this is the full length of the viewport. The sidebar is width 64 because we told you, hey, you are width 64. But this one right here didn't take the full width. We can fix that with Flexbox. We can go over here to the content and make sure we say flex is one, which means just grow to the rest of the space that you are allotted. So I'll click here and notice how now it is the rest of the space. So that is good on our content. We're not gonna mess with that anymore in this video. We can do all of our work right in this sidebar div. And then for the future, when we're ready, we're gonna have a mobile menu bar. But we don't have that yet, we will work on it at the end of this video. Okay, so to start us off, let's get a logo in here. So I'm gonna do an A tag right here because that should link to the homepage of our site. And then I'm going to close this out. And let's go to hero icons and grab an icon.com. So let's see what's a good one. This badge check I like, let's hit copy SVG, go over to our code pen again and paste that right in. And I'm going to give this a height and a width. Let's go for class is width is eight, height is eight, like that. And then inside of this, I'm gonna do a span and right next to that, I'm gonna say better dev. All right, so let's style this a little bit class. Let's go for a little bit larger class. Let's go to Excel and font is extra bold. At the top level here, we said text blue is 100. So that's cool because it's gonna cascade down to everything inside of this nav bar or this sidebar. 
and everything will be text blue 100, but we want our logo to pop a little bit more. So I'm gonna say class is text white. Now we want the logo and the icon to sit side by side. So I'm gonna say flex items center, and let's do a little spacing in between space X is two. Okay. What I wanna do here is I wanna style these nav points out, and then we'll talk about spacing. Right now we'll just leave it bunched up to the edges like this. There's a couple different strategies we can take with spacing that are really cool for side naps. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and give a little bit of spacing to our nav right here and our logo, and we'll do that on the parent item right here. So I'll say space Y is maybe six. So that gives it a little bit of spacing in between those two. And I do have a video on space Y and space X classes. <laughs> space X is my favorite of the Tailwind classes. So let's go here and let's do a tag. Let's do a few links and maybe we'll do four. So I'll do an a tag. And what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna style them out right here. Actually, let's do times four and I'll style them out. Let's say block. Let's say padding Y is 2.5. Padding X is four. And let's do that. Okay, so there's that. I'm gonna say, home for this one, about features and pricing. And let me space these out real quick. I don't like how these didn't auto format. There we go. Okay, so that's, where did that five come from? Okay. Now we should be in good shape. Oh, at 2.5, that's what it was supposed to be. So that gives it a little bit more spacing on the top and bottom of these items. And feel free to play around with the padding Y, which is top and bottom, padding X, which is left and right for what you think is a best fit for your side nav. Also, feel free to go back to hero icons, add in an icon for each of these, and then copy the same strategy we used here for the flex, item center, and space X. But for now, We'll keep moving forward and let's see if we can't style this out a little bit more. So let's add a little bit of a transition when we hover these. And this is what I'll talk about when I said, let's keep things bunched up to the edges. This is why I like to keep them bunched up until we figure out how we want our links to look. So let's say I did a hover and let's go for background, I don't know, red 400, just to test something out. So as I hover these, there we go. So as I hover, notice that it takes the full width of the entire side nav. And that's cool. That's a really cool effect. If I did this, I would probably bump up my padding Y a little bit higher, get these a little bit larger. But another strategy we can take is to say hover background red 400. And then on the parent side nav right here, we just say padding X is maybe four. Or actually, that might be a little large. Let's go for two. So now what it does is it gives a little bit of spacing on the left and right of our nav item. And then I can go down here and round out the corners right here. So we'll say rounded. And there we go. So that's a cool effect as well. So I can say blue, maybe 700, just a one shade lighter than our background. And now we have a cool effect like that. So if you like this padded section right here on the left and right, make sure to put padding X on your parent. Where are we? Padding X2. I'm gonna add a padding Y as well, padding Y7, just to get a little bit of spacing off the top. And then our A tag right here, we can add padding X of four, just to match the bottom ones. There we go. So that looks pretty good. And we can go down here and copy this strategy Hover BG blue 700, hover text blue at 50, or we can even say text white, that's fine. And then let's also add a transition and a duration of maybe 200 to that. So we can get a nice consistent like hover effect. And we can copy all of this right here. And I'll do one, two, and three, and I'll press space, paste those in. All right, so now we have a really cool effect for our nav items right there. 
and our logo is right there and that's looking pretty good for a nav bar right so once you add in your icons once you add in more link items you are in good shape all right next up let's make this responsive because if we scroll down like this that is not the most flattering thing so let me talk to you strategy about what we're going to be doing and here's the overall strategy we are going to make this an off canvas menu and what i mean by that is this blue section right here this whole nav bar is going to slide out of view and i'll show you how we're going to do that i'm going to say absolute right here we're going to say top is actually we're going to say inset y is zero so that's top is zero bottom is zero we're going to say left is zero so we're positioning it in the first place and it's back to the position but it is sitting over that content and now what we're going to do is we're going to say transform negative translate x full so we're going to say hey take your entire width and go over to the left now let's go in and add a transition duration is maybe 200 and let's say ease in out is our easing function okay so nothing is happening yet but we are going to build out a mobile menu with a button and let me show you what that button is going to do we're going to inspect right here i'm going to hover over the sidebar i'm going to go over to the dot cls to show our classes we are going to transition toggling this translate x full so we'll remove it and add it remove it add it and that's what we're going to essentially do with our button and with our javascript we're only going to add and remove one css class how cool is that all right so let's start building out our mobile menu up here we are going to say div right here div we are going to have our logo again and this kind of is where you get a little bit of repeating code and we're going to have a nav or actually we're going to have the mobile menu button so let's start with our logo we're going to say a block well, let's go for padding of four text white font bold and it'll say better dev okay so that's good there and let's actually style out the mobile menu bar class is background gray let's go for a gray text gray at 100 and that looks good but notice that it isn't really doing what we thought it was going to do it's not really like a top nav and the reason for this is because the parent has flex so now this and the child item right here are going to sit side by oh sorry that's the content are going to sit side by side we don't want that to happen so we'll go up here and say oh we don't want flex on mobile screens so on flex only happens on medium screens and there we go now let's add in a mobile menu button we're going to say button right here and let's go get an svg from hero icons we'll search for menu all right that looks good we'll copy this one svg back over paste that in and i'll give this some classes class is equal to height five and width five okay but notice it's not sitting side by side with this we have to do this on the parent flex justify between and that's going to have them sit on the left and on the right thanks to flexbox all right so now there's a little bit of spacing problem here so we'll go to this button and we'll add padding so padding of four and that looks good right there so when we click it it does have that little effect so we're going to go over here and just say focus outline none and since we do want some sort of indicator that it is being clicked we, since we removed focus outline we are going to say focus bg gray at 700. So if you click it you get this nice background that kind of shows that we have clicked into it all right so let's scroll up like this and the other thing i want to see is that this goes away on medium sized screen so we're going to say right here medium is hidden okay so let's scroll up and it's hidden let's go to that there we go now to make our sidebar responsive we need to remove two things we need to remove this absolute class and we need to remove this transform and this translate x full so here on medium we're going to say this is relative no longer absolute on medium we're going to say translate x is zero 
and that should do the trick. There we go. And notice how it still gets that cool transition in because we kept our transition and our duration and our ease in out. Sweet. So that looks good. The last step here is to actually wire up this button. So I'm going to give a couple different classes to this button since we do have to use a little bit of JavaScript. I'm going to call this mobile menu button. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to call this sidebar. So the steps here are one, grab everything we need. And two, add our event listener for the click event. So let's do that. Const button is equal to document dot query selector. And let's say mobile menu button. And if you watch the other videos about the nav bars and how we made that responsive, this is very similar to that approach. Sidebar is equal to document dot query selector. And we'll call it sidebar. Now we say button dot add event listener. On a click, I'll do an arrow function here. And what we're going to do is we're going to say sidebar dot class list dot toggle negative translate x full. So what that's going to do is add and remove that class just like we did in DevTools, but it'll do it programmatically using good old JavaScript. So I'm going to click this, and there we go. So what you could do is you could even add an X like in here or a couple other buttons, but just wire them up so that they do this exact same thing of adding and removing that class. And we can go full responsive, close it down, use our button right here. And we are in good shape. Check that out. All right. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thanks for watching.